for levels three and four for math. Okay. So level three. So at a certain chocolate factory, each bar is one unit long. So the the company wants to make the bars more interesting by combining white and dark pieces. So here are two bars, which the process starts with. And then so one is completely dark and the other is white. So I'll just doodle a line through the ones that are supposed to be dark. So at each step, we have that a new number P is chosen at random from zero to one. And then, so each of the two bars is cut P units from the left. So here, if P is here, then what happens next is that this line is that these two small. So yeah, and if it happens again, then we see that what happens next is that this gets stuck to here and then here. And if we do this again, then what happens? <clears throat> oh, sorry. This is okay. Yeah. So then, what happens after this is that? Okay. Oops. Sorry. And then, so the next step after this would be this, and then this, and then after that would be these two getting swaps, which would lead to this and oh whatever. This. Okay, this looks a bit bad at the moment, but yeah, like that. So that's the process. That's basically everything that's saying here. So now after a hundred steps total, what's the chance that on each bar the chocolate that is one third of the unit from the left? which is about this line, and is the same type as the chocolate that is two thirds from the left, which is about here. So, yeah. And so, basically, this is basically saying that the number of P that are between these two lines, which is basically in the area that I have shaded in blue, it, the number of P that are in this region is even. And that's because every time you it hits on one of this, oh yeah, I messed up on this. Whatever. Yeah, something like that. So yeah, so every time a number hits sorry, every time the bar hits one of the cuts, then what happens is that the color gets swapped. So basically, yeah. <laughs> and so <clears throat> what that means is that if the number is even, sorry, if the number between them is odd, like here, then as you can see, one is white and the other is dark. And that doesn't work. And the only way it works is if the number of uh, P between them is even. And so that's why basically we are trying to find the probability that the number of P and the shaded blue region is even. So now we case work off of the number of P's that are between, are in this blue region. So the first case is if there are zero of them between. And so if that's true, then the chain, then <clears throat> There's a total of 100 cuts. So <clears throat> that means that there are a total of 100 values of P. And so we use one third and two thirds here. And we also need 100 to zero <clears throat> because that's the number of ways to arrange. And so <clears throat> this one third will end up getting raised to the zero power because this one third represents this distance between the one third and the two third line, and how the fact that, and the zero represents how there are zero values of p in this range.
And so the two thirds just obviously represents this. Just represents <clears throat> the part that is not red. And because there is zero in the red range, that means that all 100 are in the red, are in the green range. So yeah. And so we can continue like this. So for 2n, because we already know that the number in the red range must be even. So one third will get raised to the power of 2n. And then two thirds will get raised to the power of 100 minus 2n. And finally, we will get multiplied. This will be multiplied by 100, choose 2. So yeah. And so what this, and so this just continues on. And so it continues until 100. And then it stops, obviously, because there's only 100 possible cuts total. So yeah. And so now we can just use the root of unity filter to, and from that we can just see that the value of okay, the value of this number is just two thirds plus one third to the power of one hundred plus two thirds minus one third to the power of one hundred. And this all needs to be one half. Yeah, sorry. And this all, and we need to have this because obviously it's all, it's just the even number terms from each of these and the odd number terms from this is negative of the odd number terms from this, where odd is referring to the number that would appear up here. Odd or even, it's referring to those. So yeah. And so this, we can see, is just one half of one third to the power of 100 plus one. And so that's our answer. So does anyone have any questions regarding this problem? All right, well, I guess not. And so in that case, I'll move on to the next question. So level four. So find all real numbers, x, y, z, that are at least one, that such that the minimum value of the square root of x plus x, y, z, square root of y plus x, y, z, square root of z plus x, y, z, is equal to the square root of x plus x minus one, plus the square root of y minus one, plus the square root of z minus one. So first of all, without loss of generality, let x be the minimum value of x, y, z. And the point of this is so that we have a definite value for this term. And that's just to make it much more convenient for us. So yeah. And now we can make the substitution a equals the square root of x minus one, b equals the square root of y minus one, and c equals the square root of z minus one. And so what this means is that if we reverse this, we can just see that x is equal to a squared plus one, y is equal to b squared plus one, and sorry. Z is equal to C squared plus Y. Okay. And so we know that X is the smallest. And so that means that the minimum value here is And so that means that the square root of X plus X, Y, Z is equal to square root of x minus one. And well, 
This this we already have substitution of, so this is just a plus b plus c. So next we can just square this whole thing because we already know that they're real. So it doesn't matter if yeah. Sorry, so it doesn't matter if they are rational or irrational. So we can just square them. And so what we get is that <clears throat> a squared plus one plus times plus a squared plus one times b squared plus one times okay. B squared plus one times C squared plus one is equal to A plus B plus C squared. And so next we can factor out what A squared plus one from the left side. And so what that gives is C squared, C squared plus C squared plus C squared plus two is equal to A plus B plus C squared. And so if we rearrange this some more, we can see that this is furthermore simplifiable to just A squared plus one times BC minus one squared plus A times B minus C, <coughs> sorry. B plus C minus one and all squared, and this must be equal to zero. And so now we see that this means that, and so this term is always positive. And we know that because A squared is always at least zero, and then that means that A squared plus one must be positive because it is at least one. And so since both of these terms are squares, that means that both of them must be zero. So BC minus one is zero, or BC is equal to one. And also from here, A times B plus C minus one is equal to zero, or A times B plus C is equal to one. And so we can just try to find all terms, all of the terms in terms of C. So first of all, B is equal to one over C. That's quite obvious. And furthermore, A times C plus one over C, and this is C squared plus one over C, is equal to one, or A is equal to C over C squared plus one. And so <clears throat> we already know that X is the minimum of X, Y, Z. And that's because of our assumption up here. And so that means that furthermore, A is also the minimum of A, B, C. A equals minimum of A, B, C. <clears throat> and so, that means that C is equal to C squared plus one, and then Y is equal to one over C. <clears throat> Sorry, Y is equal to uh, the square root of one over one plus B. And so that means, sorry, B, ah, sorry. Y is equal to B squared plus one, and since b is equal to 1 over c, this is just c squared plus 1 over c squared. And finally, a is equal to the square root of x minus 1, or x is equal to a squared plus 1. And so from here, we can square and add 1. And then the result is that x is equal to c to the fourth plus 3c squared plus 1. And this is all divided by C squared plus one squared. Okay. And so, yeah. 
And now if we just let c squared equal t for any constant t really, then what we can then what happens is that we can see that x, y, z is simply equal to t squared plus 3t plus 1 over t plus 1 squared t sorry t plus 1 over t and t plus 1. Yeah. So also we can make other possible substitutions depending on if you want c squared to be equal to t, or you could also make c squared plus one equal to t. Although the one we use here is just c squared equals t. And that just makes it more convenient. So does anyone have any questions regarding this problem? Uh, okay, well, if not, I guess then thank you for coming. And so next week, the guest lecturer will be Aaron Chen. And so, yeah, thank you for coming and I hope you have a nice weekend.